Hi everybody, it's Diane Gale here from SustainableSlowLiving.com and today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, I am going to try something out here with you today that I've never tried out before. Um, I did do quite a bit of research on it and I did know um, quite a bit about it before I started doing that research. So if you go and you check out the blog post, um, you'll probably catch tidbits of information there that make it seem like, you know, I've always done it, but I have not ever actually tried it hands on before. And I'm going to do that with you today. Um, and that is, <laughs> um, that is milk paint. Milk paint is and um, was very common um, back in the day. The shakers used it to paint furniture. It's starting to really make a comeback, or I don't know, maybe it has made a comeback for a little while now and I'm just catching on, but um, it is making a comeback because it, um, it, it can, it's non-toxic and so many people are looking to live a more eco-friendly lifestyle and um, it has its, it has its um, pros and its cons. Uh, so you really have to think that through. It can't really be used outside. It, it can, it can only be used inside. It's great for painting things like furniture, um, or I am going to paint this plaque, um, and stencil, you know, welcome on it for, by my front door. Um, it's great for things like that. It's not so great for painting the walls of a room because it doesn't have a shelf life. So you would, in order to get the, the same color throughout the room, you would have to mix it all at once and it would all have to be painted right away. So, you know, kind of the negatives, no outside, no large surfaces, the positives, non-toxic, easy and inexpensive to make. You can create your own colors. Um, and it has a really great, it has kind of a translucent, distressed finish when it's done, particularly on raw wood. The finish can change depending on what it's done on. But when it's done on raw wood, it has this really cool, chic, translucent kind of finish. And um, we're going to try and do it today. So I did start yesterday because you have to take your milk and your vinegar and you have to let them sit together for 24 hours. So yesterday I poured one quart of skim milk and a half a cup of white vinegar in this bowl and I mixed it with a spoon and that's all I did was pour it together and mix it with a spoon and I let it sit for 24 hours and it has curdled. I don't know how much you're going to be able to see the curdle. I have used milk to make cheese before and it curdles more than this so I'm wondering what's going to happen when I strain it um, but the milk that you use for cheese is full fat and this has to be skim milk you don't want the fat so I'm thinking that's probably what the difference is then there's also heat applied when you're doing cheese which could make a difference too but my next step is to strain this so I have just taken a little bowl here and I've put my strainer in it and I am going to pour this into the strainer oh I guess I should have gotten um, hold on I should have gotten a spatula I will go get one now okay here we go so I'm going to get the last of this out of here. I really am wondering, it doesn't seem like I have curds, so I'm wondering how this is going to work out. But like I said, we're going to do this together and find out. Let's get this over here where you can see. So I'm going to take this cloth and gather it all together. I guess I have a lot more on one side than on the other, but that's okay as long as you just get all of the edges in. And I'm going to twist it just a little, not a lot. Let's 
making a lot come out. And then I'm going to tie it. Set it down in there. And tie it. Make it nice and tight. And then I'm going to take this, I will show you um, what it looks like when I'm done, but I'm going to take this, I'm going to suspend it off of one of my cabinet handles and let it just drip into the bowl um, and let it strain like that. I'm not sure how long I have to do that for, but I assume when it stops really dripping, it'll be ready to go. So let me get it over there and get it suspended and then I'll take you over and show you what I mean in case I didn't explain it very well. A tip for you, the string that I cut for um, to tie that to the cabinet was too short. So make sure that you measure your string so that it's long enough so that your, you know, that ball of wet curds and liquid doesn't lay up against your cabinet. But that's it. I just tied it to the cabinet and hung it over a bowl and I'm going to let it drip until I feel, you know, well until it's not dripping and, and I feel like it's dry enough that we can try to make a paint out of it and see where we go from here. So I'm not sure how long this is going to take. I'm going to look at the clock right now and see about how long it takes so that I can give you an idea. And when it's done I'll come back and we'll proceed on uh, to mix the paint and see how it comes out. It's been about an hour since I hung this up to drain. I'm looking at it right now wondering how I'm going to get it out of this cloth without making a mess. It didn't make very much. There's not much curdled there. But we've got what we've got. There's whey coming out of it now but that's only because I sat it down. There was nothing coming out of it before, I assure you. This is your way. It's kind of a, a clearish, like a yellow, a translucent yellow color. Um, the way is just going to be thrown away. I read one time that you could take that way and you could use it for broth for soup when you're making farmer's cheese. Um, and I tried that. Don't ever do that. We threw the whole pot of soup away. So I'm, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm not sure at all. I think I'm just going to try and let it just run in there. There's quite a lot left on my cloth then. Let me let me um, let me get a spatula. Now I've looked at a lot. Oh, this is working really well. And this is taking the thick part of the curds off of the cloth. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just scraping the inside of the cloth here. Can you see that? Um, it's kind of bunching together now because I'm down toward the bottom, but it was just flowing really nicely. So there we go. I'm just going to throw this in here with this way, and I'll deal with that whole thing later. I love coveralls because you can just wipe everything on them. So this is it, and it's not like what, I, oh, <laughs> well there it is, <laughs> and it's not like what I'm used to, um, when I curdle milk, I'm used to like big thick curds. And this is definitely not big thick curds. But it is a nice little bit of um, a nice little bit of of curds. 
curdled milk and we're going to put some pigment in it, turn it into paint and see how that works. I read a lot about the different pigments that you can use and they actually sell like organic, all natural earth pigments online, which is what I would want to use if I was doing a lot of this. I mean, I would want to use it anyway, but I don't have any. And um, to order just that one thing online and then pay the shipping is a little bit crazy. So I just picked up this brick red pigment at like a discount store in the area. Um, it is definitely not toxin free, which is disappointing. I am going to recommend toxin free in the blog post and in the recipe for the paint. Another thing that I read you can do that I really like the idea of, especially if you have um, some sort of toxin free little craft paints or acrylic paints. I don't know if acrylic could be toxin free. I would really have to look into that. But if you had some kind of, of little craft kind of toxin free paints, you can use those to color this, um, whatever color you like. This is a brick red pigment that I picked up and it was super cheap because it was at that discount store. And I am going to just put a little bit in here and see what happens. Everything that I read online was calling for a lot of pigment, a lot. And I'm just not sure that I want that much. Oh my gosh, can you see that though? Oh my gosh, I don't think you can see that. Look at that. That is incredible. I'm gonna get a still shot of this and insert it so that you guys can see it because it's just very cool. It looks like an Easter egg. I'm loving this color. This is a beautiful pink color, but I'm not sure that pink is going to really work for a welcome sign by the door. So I'm going to add some more. This should come out a brick red. Oh, it's getting a lot darker there. Most of the recipes that I see online for this call for <clears throat> four tablespoons of pigment and I'm not going to call for a certain amount or maybe I'll call for like two to four tablespoons of pigment. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't make sense to me that you would call for a certain amount because I would think that every pigment would vary. I am using quite a bit of this pigment though. So it does seem like maybe you need quite a bit. Four tablespoons seemed like too much to me, but maybe it's not that far off. I'm starting to get a lot closer to the brick red color that I want. Although it's not all that close yet. I think I'm going to give it just a little bit more. And then I'm going to call it good just for the sake of having a stopping point. And this is experimental. It's kind of fun to do it together though. I do sometimes just feel like you guys are here with me when I'm doing things. It didn't feel that way in the beginning. In the beginning when I first started doing videos, it just felt very, very uncomfortable. And sometimes it still does. It's kind of like speech giving, you know? There's just a, <clears throat> there's a, an uneasiness to it being in front of people. But, um, it's gotten, 
easier, better, different over time. Okay. I think I'm going to call that good. So can you see that? I think you can see that. It's a pretty decent color. Um, it does have a very cool, I can tell that it's going to be translucent. Um, I don't know how to explain. It's like a muted tone, which is, which is something that I love. Um, I think it's going to work great. We're going to have to give it a try. Let's get a paintbrush, see what happens. I'm just going to lay out a little bit of newspaper here in case, um, in case I'm very messy, which I often am. And I've never worked with this paint before. I just, this is a cheap little 69 cent paintbrush that I picked up at the Amish store. Again, just because I'm just trying this for the first time. And this is a wooden plaque that I grabbed at Joanne Fabrics when I was down south for like $5.50. Uh, what a deal. Um, let's take some of this milk paint and see what happens when we put it on here. It has a thick consistency. And that's pretty thick. It's not dripping off the off the paintbrush there. Very cool. Very cool. Can you see that? Yes, you can. Look at that. I like it. I like it a lot. And it is going to be pretty much a it's going to have that brick red kind of thing going on. Yeah, that's going to work, you guys. This is very cool. Ah. Oh, yeah. Can't really see because I'm trying to make sure you can see. Okay, I like that. Um, I like that a lot very happy with that. I'm going to finish painting this. I read that this only takes a half hour to dry. And another thing um, that I can tell you, I read and I can tell you it's true is it smells very sour and the smell is kind of strong, but I guess once it dries, that goes away and it doesn't smell sour anymore. We'll see. I am very, very happy with this. Look at this. This is great. I love it. So I'm going to paint the rest of this, let it dry. I'm going to paint the back and let it dry. And then I have stencils that I cut out or not that I cut out, stencils that I printed. Um, I'm going to cut them out, draw them on the front of this, and then I'm going to take a little bit of a white craft paint and a small paintbrush, and I'm going to paint them in. And uh, yeah, and I'll be back to show you what it all looks like when it's done. But my goodness, this is awesome. This is awesome. Let me get over that. Yeah. Loving it. Just loving it. Can't wait to see the finished product. So I'm going to go and I'm going to finish painting this. I'm going to stencil it and paint the letters. I will be back to show you what it looks like when it's done. And while you're waiting for me, you should hit that subscribe button so you're subscribed to the channel. Don't forget the notification bell so that you get notified every time that I do a new video. And the thumbs up so that YouTube knows that you like the content that I'm putting out and they show it to even more people. I love having you here and I'm looking forward to all the things that we're going to do together in the future. Hold on for just a minute so you can see the finished product. It's been a couple days since I um, left to finish that plaque. 
but it is finished. Um, a couple things. The sour smell does indeed go away and it is not a half hour dry time. I'm going to recommend between two and three hours um, when I put the blog post up. Uh, it for sure is not a half hour. After a half hour it still had a tackiness to it. I didn't ruin it by touching it. I touched it very lightly. I didn't ruin it by touching it like you normally would touch and paint even lightly but it still had a tackiness to it. You know you couldn't work with it. So other than that it came out fabulous. I didn't share how to do the stencils with you and the reason for that is um, stenciling the way that I did it is not the right way to do it. I had a friend who used to make plaques to sell and she um, she used to print out on this uh, transferable paper and then she would transfer the stencil right to the plaque and it was so easy and I and I've done it before with um, carbon paper and stuff like that but you know once again I just went with what I had in the house I cut those stencils out in the um, cursive kind of print and they were very difficult I could only cut part of them out I had to trace them on with a pen and then I had to freehand the inside and um, th it was just very difficult as a matter of fact it took me five and a half hours to do the stenciling um, and that's total time there was a break in between because I had to do two coats but that's total time it took me five and a half hours and that is absolutely not necessary there's a lot of ways to stencil but the post isn't really about stenciling and you can do it that way if you're just doing like one plaque that's another reason that I just went ahead and did it the harder way because I'm not buying a bunch of supplies I, I, I don't need a bunch of supplies I'm doing one little welcome plaque Speaking of the welcome plaque, I can't wait to show you because I am super excited about the way it came out. I think that it looks <laughs> really fabulous. I'm really happy with it. So I encourage you to give it a shot. Find something that you want to do with milk paint and make yourself up a batch. It's really a nice finish. It really is. And there will be um, pictures of it up on the blog, you know, at least one or two with it finished. Um, I think that you'll really enjoy it and if you do do it then go ahead and post a picture of what you make down below because I would love to see it. Thanks so much for being here. I know that you've already subscribed and hit the thumbs up and hit the notification bell so I'm off. I hope you guys have a great day and we'll get together again really soon.